Let's start. Just how triggering are our phones when it comes to dopamine? Okay, great question. Uh, we often hear that, you know, that social media getting dopamine hit after dopamine hit. When we first get on social media after a wall, for the first time or after a long period of time, the amount of dopamine that's released we think is quite substantial. It's novel. Remember, dopamine is about novelty, surprise, and the sense that we are on some exciting track. That's what dopamine is really about. It puts us into states of readiness, anticipation, looking, seeking, etc. almost always for things outside the confines of our skin. Uh, just to contrast it maybe for a bit f more of a future discussion, serotonin does the opposite. When there's a lot of serotonin in our right. brain and body, typically it makes us feel satisfied, sated, and more quiescent, comfortable with what we have in our own immediate sphere and within us, right? The comfort of a good meal, the food you have, dopamine is about go, go, go. If you look at somebody who's high on cocaine or methamphetamine, it's all about pursuit because that's a very dopaminergic drug. You look at somebody who's taken a drug, and I'm not suggesting people do this, but it really ramps up serotonin. Let's say a selective serotonin reuptake inhibitor. Prozac, Zoloft, et cetera. The side effects of those drugs, if the dosages are too high, lack of appetite, lack of libido, kind of meh about life, you know, then so they'll adjust the dose down. That's because those are serotonergic drugs. So the main speaker here is Dr. Andrew Huberman. He's a neuroscientist and then a professor of neurobiology, I believe. I'll link you to his YouTube channel down below. In, in general, when we are in pursuit of things, dopamine is, is quite high. So now you have to remind me your question because I've set up the dopamine serotonin uh, parallel. Cell phones. Ah, cell phones, yes. Um, forgive me. So the thing about cell phones is when you first get on there and you haven't, let's say you're it, no Wi-Fi on the flight or something and you land, it can actually be quite stimulating. You get a lot of dopamine. Oh, there's this. Oh, there's that. But very quickly when you're scrolling on social media, you're no longer getting the novelty, but you're continuing to do it. And you almost don't know why you're doing it. At that point, it shifts over to something that's a bit more like an obsessive compulsive behavior where the, we can define an obsessive compulsive behavior where the obsession leads to a compulsion. So the obsession is a thought, the compulsion is a behavior, but the acting out of the compulsion merely serves to increase the obsession. Right? This is very different than being obsessed with food or obsessed with cleanliness. There's no payoff. Right, exactly. There's no anxiety relief by carrying out the compulsion. With OCD behaviors, uh -huh. like scrolling social media, the dopamine quickly wanes, and then you find that you're just sort of, and we've all been there, you're scrolling, you're like, why am I doing this? This isn't that interesting. That is, this isn't that interesting. Now, I can attest to this a bit. You guys will have to let me know if you've done something similar. But sometimes I pick up my phone and check its contents only to find that there was absolutely no change from when I did it four minutes ago. So I put it down. And then about seven minutes later, I pick it up and do the exact same thing. Almost out of mindless habit at that point. Now, I'm trying to be more conscious and either turn it off or put it into another room when I find that I'm doing these repetitive behaviors. But can you relate? The algorithms for social media are very clever, and I don't want to demonize it. I, you know, provide a lot of a lot of my life is spent on you know on social media now. But in the algorithms that they've incorporated function on the the most powerful way to keep people doing a behavior or an animal for that matter is intermittent random reward, a random intermittent reward that you don't know when you're going to hit the jackpot. So you're scrolling, you're scrolling, and then you see something. Typically, it's very high what, you know, in nerd speak, we'd say signal to noise. So if you're reading some interesting things, this came out in the news, this came out, and then it's all of a sudden a riot or a person that is, jump, is base jumping off a building or, um, you know, for people that are, are scrolling, looking at bodies or something like that, uh, live bodies. Uh, hopefully people aren't looking at dead bodies. But look, if something's very tragic, then that has this gravitational pull. And then you, what happens is you start getting the system working for that next dopamine hit that you don't know when it's going to come. It's just like gambling. So I look at social media as initially being very dopaminergic, driving reward, surprise, and excitement, but very quickly transitioning to something more like OCD and the kinds of behaviors where it looks, if, you, if we were to look at ourselves through the lens of an experiment like we would an animal experiment, we think that animal is sick. If you saw an animal digging in the corner, looking, 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 looking for a bone, the dog is looking, 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 you'd think that's really sad. Yeah. That's us. Uh -huh. <laughs>
<laughs> okay. Well, it's not lost on me that we're on social media right now. So we'll put that aside for a second. But that whole talk made me consider the implications or the impact that short form content has on concentration. And in the context of social media, TikTok, for example, has, I think, three minute max content. Instagram stories is one minute max. And then YouTube recently released their shorts feature to compete with TikTok. So if children grow accustomed to three minute maximum content or word counts on content to condense it, how could that affect their ability to focus when they're asked to do something for long periods of time? We send them to school to sit in a 45 minute to an hour 30 minute long class and then wonder why they can't sit still or concentrate. And could there be a correlation between that and the rise in ADHD and ADD diagnoses? You'll have to leave your opinion. But I suppose an even better question is, if that's the case, what's a solution that comes to your mind? Because I think it would be extremely unlikely for these big tech social media companies to collectively cease to exist. And they're making money through the short form content. But none of that was to say that I think that social media is inherently negative. I just think that there are some negative side effects. Personally, I learned so much from watching YouTube. And although I couldn't really think of a literary recommendation that goes with this, I'll link you to some YouTube channels that I think are great for learning something new. If you haven't seen anything from the Crash Course series, I recommend it. I think it's good for adults and children. It's animated, it's fast paced, and they cover subjects from world history, starting at the agricultural revolution to current day, chemistry, entrepreneurship, literature, math. If you want something more long form, Dan Carlin's Hardcore History. Sometimes the episodes are three hours long, but he gets into historical events and figures, and he's a really good teacher. The rest of the content that I consume is economic and finance focused, but if you're into that, Blockworks Macro is my go-to. So if you can think of any YouTube channels that you learn from, please link them down below and we'll start sharing resources. But other than that, that's all I have to say. So let me know what you think about anything here and thanks for watching with me. Hey,